Previously on Bleach, Ichigo and the gang arrive at the Soul Palace, ready to take on Yuha Bok. And oh, jeez! Ah. Oh, what the hell? Uh, obviously it's because of an earthquake. Don't you know that when God gets killed, there's an automatic global earthquake? Jeez. Oh, really? You don't say! Oh, man, this is gonna be a really annoying freaking way to do the review this week. Um... Uh... Uh, was that you? I mean, like, I already know because I'm a ladybug of infinite knowledge, but w was that you? I don't know, but I do know I have this strange urge to eat some walnut shrimp right about now, but I have no idea what's caused- Oh! Oh, that's right, we had two events in Weekly Shonen Jump this week that almost caused the end of the world, so I guess they kind of cancelled each other out. Um, thanks, Bambina! Everybody, Techie 101 here. Hit review Bleach chapter number 615 entitled All is Lost. I'm pretty hopeful, actually, where this is gonna go. So chapter opens up with Yuzu and Karin for a change at the Kurosaki Clinic as they're experiencing the massive earthquake that occurred after their older brother killed God. My God, they are gonna get completely wrecked when it comes to high school. You know, all the people, all the bullies are gonna tease them like, Haha, Karin, your older brother killed God. Man, we are gonna haze the shit out of you. But uh, essentially, uh, Karin's pretty chill about it, though, all things considered. I don't know if it's the thing in Japan where earthquakes are just more common like they are on the West Coast, but I mean, if there was an earthquake right now here, I think I'd have about shit my pants because that just never happens but Karin's pretty chill she just keeps on playing her uh, uh PS4 I think I don't know what the hell she's playing because it still has a cord attached to the controller whatever the hell it is so Karin geez go freaking wireless at this point it's 2015 but anyway yeah Yuzu was bringing her some juice but because of the earthquake it spilled all over the floor and Karin seems a little bit more annoyed by the fact that she spilled her juice rather than the fact that there's a massive earthquake about to kill them all teenage years I guess although to be honest if I was busy playing playing my Xbox like a really good game and there was an earthquake that happened, I would be more pissed off by the fact that my iced tea would get knocked over by the earthquake than I would be by, you know, the actual prospect of my house falling down on me. So yeah, that's just how I am. Yeah, so anyway, Kyrie just decides to help Yuzu clean up the juice, and she just looks out the window and just kind of nonchalantly states, Hey, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been shaking for quite a while now, right? It's been four hours, Kyrie! Where have you been? Oh, I was, I was fighting this boss. Sorry, uh, Kubo's not really giving me much to do in this final arc. You know, I remember back, you guys are gonna love this, I remember back when the Fullbringer arc started, back when Ichigo still did not have his powers back yet. There was a fan theory that Karin was going to assume the role of Substitute Shinigami, and Ichigo would be pushed back to more of a uh, of a mentor figure, sort of how Rukia was at the beginning of the series. Now remember, this was before we knew what the final arc was gonna be about yet and everything. This was still the beginning of the Fullbringer arc. And I, you know, I, I really like that idea, just for the fact that it would be something different, and, you know, and if they, it was conducted right, yeah, sure, Karin could have been an awesome main character if, if Kubo did it the right way, and Ichigo would still be around, of course, and all the other Shinigami could still pop in and help out whenever they need, they're needed. And now, not only is that idea completely, you know, has no hope of coming to fruition, but even more so than that, Karin's only two appearances in the entire final arc of Bleach so far featured her sitting in her room playing a video game. <sighs> Yeah, meanwhile, their big brother is literally having a clash with god-like figures, so I just, I just find that amusing. They're gonna, like, if, if I was Ichigo's sister, okay, whatever, if I was Ichigo's sister, and he came back and said all the shit that he was doing, I'd be pissed off that he didn't take me with him or something. I'm, that's just how I would be. But anyway, we get the title page of the chapter, 615, All is Lost, and we get a pretty cool full-page spread, well, almost full-page spread of the Soul King, just kind of looking dejected, as he always does, Sobo, who sees the future. Sobo, of course, meaning twin pupils, which is referring to, you know, the Soul King's odd-shaped pupils' eyes, which were very similar to Aizen's eyes when he attained the god level. Oh, by the way, Aizen, yeah, we're actually gonna get 
get back to him later. There's something I have to discuss that may result in him not being such a bad guy as everyone thought he was. But just hold on to that until later in the video. So we cut over back to the uh, Soul King's cocoon palace, where the one half of the uh, Soul King's glass dome that had half of his body in it crashed to the ground, where the other half is still being uh, suspended by those uh, cords. I, I just love that. You know, like, the Soul King, the Rio, the god of all creation who can see everything according to the title page, he still needs to be held in place with bungee cords. I love that. And Ichigo's face is probably what you would imagine after just killing God. A little bit of dejection there, just a little bit. Um, you know, Orihime, Chad, Ganju, and Yoroichi are all staring very, you know, like, cautious and serious. Kind of like, I would imagine they're just, like, bracing themselves, like, okay... What's gonna happen now? Are we gonna start, like, fading into non-existence or something? Like, literally anything could happen at this point, you know? A universal rift could open up and the Titans could spill out from Shingeki no Kyojin and, and they would be like, okay, so that's what happened after the Soul King dies. Alright, that makes sense. I guess everything could make sense now. You all Bach just keeps going on his suave little Bond villain monologue stating that's like, ah, oh, don't make me repeat myself, Ichigo. You're too late. Thank you for delivering the final blow on the Soul King. Ichigo's standing there just questioning why the hell did I stab him? Why couldn't I do this? I had one fucking job and I couldn't even accomplish this. God damn it, Kubo. I just realized this and a lot of other people noticed it, you know, earlier, but I just noticed it now. The Soul King has no arms. So yeah, I mean, I know he's encased in a glass dome, but maybe if he had arms, something would have changed. Like, you know, Ichigo goes to stab him. He could have at least, you know, maybe blocked it or something. I don't know. Do you know how miserable it is for me to go through life like this? Do you know how unhappy I am? Do you know how hard it is to hang yourself with your feet? Hard? That's near flipping impossible! But Yuha just continues to go and do the thing that uh, Aizen love to do, and that's just... I mean, okay, granted, I was going to complain about him monologuing, but considering the fact that from Yuha's perspective, he pretty much just won, and also because of his powers, he can see the future, he's pretty much, like, 100% guaranteed that, okay, everything's cool now, I won, it's all good, so I can monologue a little bit. He goes on to explain to Ichigo, my script is the letter A, the Almighty, able to foresee all of the future, and the ability to steal all the power. Okay, that's... That's a little bit OP. Does, does anyone want to say that with me here? That's a little bit OP. Okay, just throwing that out there. I am also able to give my Reiatsu, which dwells within my sword, to you. All right, so this is going back to 565 when we were talking about that miracle baby Yuha that was able to divvy out his soul to other people and give them power, and then it has the power returned back to him. So I think that's just more like an advanced form of that, where he can steal any power. He doesn't have to give the, like, the soul to him. Or random, maybe maybe he's referring to only Quincy's. I mean, he said all power, but if that was the case, he'd just like, snap his fingers and take all the Bonkais and everything in, in his existence, in his purview. He wouldn't need you know, to go through this massive army of Quincy's and everything, but maybe he's just referring to Ichigo like, you're a Quincy, so I can take all your power whenever I want, or something equivalent to that. And he explains that what happened with Ichigo last chapter wasn't exactly a possession, it was just the fact that the Quincy blood flowing in him is essentially Yuha's original property so he can control it at will. So it's not like Ichigo was like, engineered puppet strings, it's just like, you know, Ichigo's inner Quincy blood just, you know, like, uh, resonated with Yuha's will, I guess would be to use a phrase, and then that's what caused him to slice it. There's no indication that Yuha is going to be, like, brainwashing Ichigo. Ichigo is going to stand up like Yuha's robotic zombie and do whatever he says. Uh, I think it was just in that one instance with the Soul King and the presence and everything, and that's, like, Yuha's one goal was to kill the Soul King, so that's obviously what happened with Ichigo, like, uh, uh, using uh, Yuha's will, if, if that makes any sense. Anyway, though, Ichigo grabs his hand and manages to drop Soibaron. I guess that's nullifying the uh, blue vein effects as for the moment. He reaches for his own sword on his back and then charges at Yuha, clashing swords with him. Do you still have a reason to fight me? Not really, but this is going to happen at some point in the series, so we're just going to get through it now, I guess. He states that the Soul Society has been eradicated, and he's a little bit fibbing on that. We cut back down, and we see the Soul Society is not necessarily eradicated yet, but it is in the process of crumbling apart. The outer wall of the Seirite, or the Vonite, is completely, almost completely gone. Over to the, even the 12th Division barracks, which are also collapsing under the weight of the uh, destruction of the Soul King. Everyone's freaking out here, and just like, I, I can imagine everyone's freaking out what's going on. They immediately turn to Uehara for answers, because he's the guy that has all the answers. It's like, Uehara, what's going on? Uehara's standing there, he's just like... The Soul King has died, and this deadpan, holy shit, are we fucked expression is great coming from Uohara. I, I you gotta chuckle at that, because Uohara is the kind of guy, he's got everything under his belt. He plans for every contingency. You never, you very rarely see the guy with an honest-to-God expression of, I don't know what to do next, guys, because that's just not his character. But right here, this face, everyone looks at that, and they're just like, Oh, man, we're boned. Don't worry, guys, I think we're okay, because, as we all know, he is... 
Oh yeah, don't worry guys, I got this taken care of. Uh, oh fuck, oh fuck, we are so totally screwed right now. Oh, we are boned. Shinji asks Uohara, like, what the hell is the Zero Division doing up there? And Uohara comes to the, like, the, like, the conclusion. He's just, like, panting, you know, sweating profusely. He's like, um, okay, well, uh, the only logical conclusion was that the entire Zero Squad got wiped out. So, right there, I want you just to, you know, sell that in your mind. And also, Ichigo wasn't, uh, you know, uh, quick enough. So, really just a matter of time, I guess, really. If Ichigo was maybe, like, an hour earlier, we could have maybe prevented this. But, uh, yeah, no. So, uh, Urahar goes on to explain something that we kind of already figured from the last chapter, that it's not only the Soul Society that's experiencing these effects, it's also the living world, the Dongai, and Huecomundo. Uh, we don't get any scenes from the Dongai or Huecomundo, but we can assume they're in, like, similar turmoil right now. They're getting shaken apart, and, uh, I'm guessing Grimchow and Nell, if they're still around, they'll be like, oh, man, guys, we should have done something. Yeah, we should have went with Orihime and Chad. That probably would have been the thing to go. Oh, well, I guess we're just gonna get, you know, earthquaked out of existence now. Yeah, sure, weird, huh? Yeah, I know, right? We cut back up to the Chrysalis Palace again, where Yuha is kind of, like, finishing up his elaborate speech he's giving. It's very similar to Urahara's. Like, Urahara's down there giving his, like, melancholy, like, we're bone speech. Yuha's up there giving his grandiose, like, the Soul Society, the Wake of Mundo, the Danga, the Living World, they're all going to be destroyed under my, under my rule now, because the Soul King has been destroyed. And this is where we get the startling scene where somebody decides to do something while this motherfucker keeps talking. We have Yoroichi up here behind Yuha laying out a bunch of wires. Aw, oh, damn it. Is this Lubbock again? Okay, listen, you green-haired little prick. I swear to God. No, 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 it's me. Oh, um, Doflamingo? No, think again. Uh, Walter from Helsing? Oh, God damn it. How many anime characters use wires as a main attack? Well, I don't know, but none of them have been you up to this point. So Yoroichi pretty much takes charge of the situation and says, you know, if Yuha moves a single inch, he'll be shredded by the wire. By the way, I just want to throw out one thing. Yuha, yeah, sure, I can see all possible futures, and yet when this happens to him, he gets the wires laid out all around him, we still see a big freaking exclamation point like, oh, I'm shocked by this. You really should have seen it coming, just saying. Just You just defined your own power, like, literally two panels ago. You should have ex you should have seen the wire thing coming, but whatever. And then we get, like, the starring point of the chapter. Oh my god, it's great, because all the comments... I, I didn't mention this last chapter, because it was just... It, it's just not... I just knew it's not what Kubo was going to do. And everyone's like, Orihime's power could heal the Soul King. She could use her Soten Keshun and re reject fate and make it so he's whole again. Guys, guys, you just don't get it. It's... The tenseness of the situation and the tone that Kubo's setting, he, he would never do that, okay? He would never just, oh, snap your fingers and everything's fixed again. It just it just wouldn't happen, so that's why I didn't bring it up. But it's hilarious because he gives, gives or Yoroichi th seems to think it will, and she shouts over to Orihime like, Use your powers to restore the Soul King back to normal. Oh, okay, I got this. Soten Kishun! Okay, see, there you go. I solved the problem. Soul King's back in action. Now all we have to do is take out Yuha... <laughs> Oh, son of a bitch, Ichigo, what the hell? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I just, I just, I had the urge to stab him again. Okay, oh, God. All right, hold on, we'll try this again. Soten Kishun. Healed. Okay, good, great. Now, Ichigo, could you please... Oh my crap, Ichigo, would you please stop killing God? It's really rude. I'm just kidding. That would be the funny way to take it now. No, Orihime's powers do absolutely nothing. Her Soten Kishun just shatters around the Soul King, while Yuha is just standing there snickering like, <laughs> do you really think that the powers of a meager human, which we don't know where the powers that Orihime has comes from. We, we, you know, Aizen said they came from the Hogyoku. I would assume they're more similar to a Fullbring than anything else. But even with that, it's still a power that only a human possesses. Orihime is still just a human. So Yuha is just like, there's no way that, like, we're on the god level now here, Missy. There's no way your powers are even gonna even matter at this point in time, and the Soul King will never return. Although I will admit you still have awesome tits. Wow. Yes, she certainly does. You know, Urahara, I just thought of something. Maybe instead of having the extra time while in Wake Mundo to design that really scantily clad outfit for Orihime, you maybe could have been thinking of a better contingency plan for when the Soul King may possibly have died. Like, I know you're Uohara Kisuke. I'm sure you could have come up with something like, you know, even if the Soul King dies, oh, maybe we could use like this emergency pocket universe or stabilizer or something. But no, you have to, you know, busy knitting a, a revealing outfit for Orihime instead or whatever. So last scene of the chapter, we cut back down to the uh, 12th division for just a couple panels where we see Renji freaking out like, oh, come on, guys. You know, this can't be the end. There has to be something going on. There has to be something we can do, right? 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 
right? And then we see Ugetaki standing there. He doesn't really do anything, but we just see like a shadow creeping up on the side of his face, and then that ends the chapter. So we're assuming now that this is going to tie back in with the Kamekake. Now, two possibilities here. Number one, the Kamekake was like, I don't know, a backup drive or like, a, you know, a, an emergency uh, reserve of the Soul King. Like maybe he, the Soul King stored his essence into Ukitake as like a vessel so the Soul King could maybe come back to life or existence at some point in time. Or possibility number two, the Kamekake allows Ukitake to succeed the Soul King and become the next one. And I could personally see that. I could never see Ichigo becoming the Soul King because, you know, um, it's explained in this chapter that the Soul King is basically just this figure that was created by the Soul Society in a sense of turmoil. Like, I'm assuming like tens of thousands of years ago, the Soul Society was not the way it exists now. Like, souls were coming and going at random rates and the balance was just skewed. So, the ancestors to the Shinigami maybe created the Soul King as more of just like an object, as I stated, in order just to traffic the souls. That's his sole purpose. You know, he's not supposed to move or anything. That's why he's more of just an object. He's just supposed to regulate the intake of souls between the dimensions. But now that Yuha killed him, he wants to return the Soul Society to the place that existed before Beforehand, all right, so I could see Ukitaki maybe just taking the place as just like the as the object to just you know like maybe his consciousness is just you know be preoccupied by you know channeling all these souls you know maybe the Soul King could move if he wanted to he's just too preoccupied with his main task so here's where we go back to Aizen all right I just want you to follow me on this okay so Aizen he wanted to kill the Soul King too but remember when he activated the Hogyoku he became more similar to the Soul King so I I want to say that maybe he wanted to kill the current Soul King but he wanted to take its place. Yuha didn't want to do any of that. He just wanted basically chaos for chaos's sake and maybe return the Soul Society to the place it was beforehand. Maybe that has something to do with the Quincy's past or whatever. And and that's why he kept saying like the Soul King is like this meager, you know, like 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 pathetic existence of the Soul King. Why are you even a thing that exists? You know, he wanted to get rid of it because that's not the way that he wanted the world to exist. He wanted the world to exist in chaos, and maybe it's more primal state, whatever, what have you. Aizen didn't want any of that. He still wanted to be the Soul King, so maybe he just figured like, hey, I don't like the way things are run here with that, you know, that Soul King up there. I could do a better job. So that's why Aizen went through so much of a big problem, a big trouble of, you know, getting all that power and acquiring the Hogyoku and doing the whole Soul Society arc subterfuge thing and transcending to a god level. All he wanted to do was take over the job as the Soul King because he thought he would be a better, you know, he would be a better fit for it, you know? Is that still selfish? Is there still faults with his plan? Of course there are. You know, even when he was, uh, when he was about to be sealed by Urahara, he's going on that rant, like, you know, like, 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 like you should, uh, Victor should speak of the world should be rather than how it currently operates. He saw the shit that was going on with the Soul King and he thought, you know, fuck that, I could do a better job. So when you look at it like that, Aizen's plan seems a little bit more childish in a sense, but like, like a little child saying, like, I could be a president of the United States better than Obama because of, you know, these reasons, but it's not certainly as evil as everyone's putting them out to be. I'm just throwing that idea out. What do you guys think? Seriously, I want you guys to respond to that, because I'm having, like, a big enlightening here, like, jeez, Eisen may have not have been a massive prick as we all thought he was, but, um, yeah, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the review. Sorry it's, it's, it's been delayed, but let me guys, let me tell you something right quick. Um, if my if my review is never out on Thursday or Friday, like when around the time the chapter gets released, there's usually a good reason for it. It's either a work-related reason, school-related reason, or I'm sick. You can easily tell which one it is by just going on my fan page and seeing. I, I've gotten so many comments that are just like, where's 615? Where's 615? Like, you know chapter 615 is released, right, Techie? I'm like, yes, I know when every chapter is released. I'm always like up Thursday morning first thing to read the chapter. That's the first thing I do. Um, but if it's not out within like a day or so, there's usually a good reason for it. I usually just don't sit on my ass just like, I don't feel like making a review today. That's just not how I do things. So next time that happens, guys, just, just check my fan page. It's the links below. Like it if you haven't already. You'll get notifications like as quick as I put them out there of why the review is going to be delayed, when is my, like the general time frame I think it's going to get out, and the reason why it's delayed. So that's the reason because of that. Just thought I'd give you a little public service announcement there. But anyway, hope you you guys enjoyed Techie 101 signing out.